Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. Visit squarespace.com slash Brendan Vanson for more details. What's going on and welcome to another week of my life. I think this week is going to be chaos. Chaos is defined as the property of a complex system whose behavior is so unpredictable as to appear random, owing to great sensitivity to small changes in conditions. For most people, I think chaos is something they avoid, fear, or attempt to control. Personally, if there isn't chaos, I feel like something's wrong. Chaos isn't just okay to me, chaos is to be embraced, enhanced, and ridden like a wave. This week feels like chaos, in the best way. Last night's storm here ripped the coast of Italy to pieces, and the remnants of said chaos seems to have created the perfect parameters for fantastic photos. Manarola, Cinque Terre, Italy, and there was just a big storm last night, so the waves are crazy, crazy. I was here nearly 10 years ago and have an average photo from here, but I've always dreamed of these conditions. Wild seas smashing into town, so I am really, really excited for this. I'm excited, but the truth is I'm also pretty limited. The waves are crashing so high, the national park has blocked the lower trail, which for me is the best photo location for Manarola. Without much option for location, we decide to fix our tripod feet to the floor at the best spot and wait for the light to drop and the waves to hop. It's wild seeing these conditions. The last time I was here, I was taking photos from down on the rocks along the ocean. If I were to do that today, I'd probably not make it back up. The waves are downright violent today. Ooh, is my autofocus on? Yeah. We're now basically at sunset. Some of the clouds have disappeared, but the conditions of the waves are crazy. Uh, that being said, I'm falling into two traps. Woo! One is taking a thousand photos. Okay, three traps. One is taking a thousand photos. Two is I cannot resist going wide. With big waves like this, you kind of want to go more telephoto because it compresses them and they look more dramatic. But I cannot resist trying to get everything into the frame. And then the second trap I'm falling into is I can't resist long exposures. I'm only doing a quarter second or a half second because I want that motion. But when you do that, you lose a little bit of the drama too. But I can't resist. And I'm not going to apologize for it either because I'm having fun. Yeah, I'm having fun. And with light conditions like this, how can you not? Eventually though, it got too dark to take photos. So we packed up our camera gear, our faces with pizza, and ourselves into bed for the night. The next morning, we were at it again. So it is uh, six in the morning, and we're leaving the train station to head to another one of the the villages, Vernassa, but unfortunately, our train is delayed. And to catch sunrise, you have to be on the first train. And uh, if that first train's delayed, you gotta run. <laughs> so, trains arriving in Vernassa at 6.30, sunrise is at seven, so we're gonna have to jump on the train and then literally sprint to our photo location. I think if a train is on time in Italy, it's considered early. Of our three days in Cinque Terre, only once was the first train of the day on time. 
Don't count on punctuality here. But luckily, even with the delay, we managed to scamper our way through the alleys of our NASA and up to our photo spot. Made it in time for sunrise and the colors are kind of popping. This location has always been a bit of a challenge for me because you have this lemon orchard in the foreground and some tall grasses that get into your frame. And in the past, I've tried to cut them out somehow, but they're so tall right now, you just can't do that. So instead, I'm kind of just embracing them, using them as my foreground and playing with, what do we got? Three, two and a half seconds F11. Little bit of slow shutter on the waves. Um, they're not as intense as last night, and yeah, I think this is looking pretty dreamy. Cinque Terre is about color to me, and I love the way the color pops in this image. After the sun got a bit strong, we decided to wander down to the harbor to see what it looked like after the storm. Wow, so we've just uh, walked through Vernassa and the storm was so crazy that this is well into town. Rocks, full-size rocks, like that, were knocked in by the storm. There's just debris everywhere. Luckily, it looks like most of the buildings are okay. There's one boarded up building, but everything kind of looks okay. But absolutely crazy. For us, the waves were fun for photos, for the locals, I think it was a bit of a pain in the ass. Shrubs dot the stone walkways. Twigs and branches pile up and full layers of sand line the walkways in town. The storm definitely had an impact. The locals tell us that a storm like this only happens every three, four, five years. We were lucky to witness it. Although I'm sure the cleanup crews here don't feel so lucky. After admiring mother nature's art, we hop back on the train and head towards our next destination. Brandon, where are we going? To the mall. Let's go to the mall. Is that right? Sure. We're going to Cornelia, which is on top of a hill. And how are we going to get there, Greg? But train. You're going to take the train to the top of the hill? No, we're going to go to Cornelia by train and then walk up 400 steps. Are you going to count the steps? I wasn't planning on it. Now you got to do it. You got to prove there's 400 steps or else Guinness Book won't approve of your record. Italiano, no parlo italiano. No parlo italiano. Allora. Papa. Seven days in Italy and Greg and I have both lost our minds. We step off the train and up the 400 stairs. And I can confirm there are 400 stairs. Not because I counted, but because my legs hurt afterwards. And apparently, the climbing affected my brain a little bit. Because at this point, I somehow just forgot to talk to the camera for a couple days. So, more voiceover it is. Cornelia is actually really cool. Lots of tourists skip the village due to the climb, and the fact that it doesn't have that classic Cinque Terre photo spot. But we were pretty intent on making an image from up here one way or another. Eventually, we found a viewpoint and aimed our lenses at one of the other villages. I played around with some long exposures and eventually settled on a one minute exposure. 
Later, after more pizza and sleep, we headed out the following morning to photograph the other side of Vernassa and another really classic Cinque Terre photo spot. I had a plan to photograph a little bit higher up on the trail than the usual spot, up here. But I got a case of the photography FOMO and headed down to where I was sure I'd get a couple good photos. Inspired from the long exposure photos from the night before, I went back at the full minute exposure in the morning for this image. I also made a similar square crop photo. I'm not sure which one I prefer. What do you think? Like photographer clockwork, we climbed back down, took some rest and pizza, and headed out to another classic Cinque Terre photo spot. Only this time, we wouldn't be so lucky. So it's the last evening here in Cinque Terre and we were kind of blessed with huge waves a couple days ago but now it's turned into a bit of a problem in that the waves are still rolling and you can't get to half of the photo locations that we want to. Um, for example here in Rio Maggiore and since I'm leading a workshop I kind of have to be selfless. There's probably only enough room for five, six tripods in the spot for sunset that you can shoot here so it might just be a case of me not taking any pictures tonight but maybe i'll sneak in there for a brief moment just when the light's good and get one we'll see this red flag means you can't pass the barrier we asked the locals if we could go down despite the red flag but they assured us the police would come and visit us so we stayed settled I did manage to hop my way into a photo though. Even though it's not the spot I wanted to take the picture from, it's still pretty dreamy. In the morning, I did actually remember to talk to the camera. The only problem is, I forgot to press the record button. So I'll explain. We're back at Manarola, but this time, the waves have chilled out enough that we can photograph the city from the lower viewpoint, and even down on the rocks. From down here, you get a totally different perspective. It feels like you have more of a chance to be creative and unique. I squeezed out, I squeezed a couple photos from down here I like, calling this a very successful couple days of photography in Cinque Terre. Cinque Terre was fun. Um, like I said, we got some good light. We got some good luck with the huge waves. We got some bad luck because the waves um, kind of limited us. But overall, this was awesome, awesome fun. And uh, now I'm, I've got to travel home. Well, Madeira, I guess. I don't really have a home right now. But we're going to Madeira, uh, and hopefully we can get a coffee shop open, so let's hit the road. The journey home is funny. If you followed my recent life update, I'm not really sure I have a home anymore. So in a way, it just feels like I'm going back to my other life. Like I'm living some sort of double life. One in Portugal, and one in travel. On the journey home, I stop at Pisa to watch people do silly things for a photo. You know, sillier than a typical landscape photographer? Then, I board a plane from Venice to Madrid to Madeira.
I'm definitely still getting the hang of like trying to film every day to the point that I actually totally forgot to film for the past three days while here in Madeira. I really want to get back into this like daily vlogging-esque format, but I am just like not in the like, I don't know, the routine of filming every single day when I'm at home like I used to. So it's definitely going to take some time, so sorry that there was no footage from here in Madeira. Basically all I've been doing is running around getting business licenses to get this coffee shop open. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to call this an episode, and the next one, I'll be back on the mainland. See you there. Peace. Let me tell you quickly about today's sponsor. Squarespace is an amazing place for photographers and bloggers to build a really professional looking website really quickly and easily. It has a lot of templates that make it simple to get started. You have great resources too, like members only areas. Easy to build stores for selling arts and even services. Of course, there's also lots of other great tools for creators such as a logo maker and in-depth analytics. So if you're looking for a photography website or portfolio, head to squarespace.com slash Brendan Vanson for a 10% discount on your first purchase. Link in the description.